In this video, we're going to be transforming the Raspberry Pi 5 into an awesome mini desktop PC. And with this, yeah, you'll be able to do the basics like browse the web, edit photos, check your email, document editing, but we'll also be able to play games and emulators like PSP, Dreamcast, and even some PS3 games using the updated version of RPCS3. And to do this, obviously, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 5. I would recommend at least the 8 gig model. An NVMe SSD, I'm using a PCIe 3 Samsung drive, it's 512 gigs, pretty cheap over on Amazon, I'll leave a link in the description. And to bring it all together, I'm going to be using the new DeskPi Lite case. So this is actually pretty awesome. Over on their official website, I think it's like 34. On Amazon, it is 40. It's really up to you. I'll put both links down below. But this is an all-in-one case solution for the Raspberry Pi 5. External power button. We've got NVMe support. Comes with a cooler and a round back. It actually brings those micro HDMIs up to two full-size HDMI ports. We've still got access to the GPIO with the adapter that comes along with this. And overall, it's a nice streamlined little case that comes with everything you need to get it put together. Inside the box, we've got the cooler, our main board, the shell itself, a GPIO adapter, ribbon cable for that NVMe board, all the hardware we need, and the thermal pads for the cooler. Basically, what you're going to need to bring to the table is that Raspberry Pi 5 and an NVMe SSD. Assembly with this whole setup is super easy. First things first, we're going to install this heatsink. I've put all of the thermal pads on and it does seem a bit overkill here for what we've got. But once we've got those installed, we can go ahead and just drop on the heatsink. Does come with some plastic screws for the bottom and we've got an active fan here. So we'll plug this into the fan header on the Raspberry Pi 5. And I've just kind of routed the cable so it's a little cleaner. We've got the GPIO board on, and we've got the two screws for the heatsink itself. Next thing we're going to do here is install the board that came included. We're going to plug in both of the micro HDMI ports and USB Type-C. Once we've got that together, we do need to install this ribbon cable so we can actually utilize that NVMe slot here. And once that's together, we'll go ahead and install the NVMe SSD. And again, I'm just using a cheaper Samsung 512 gigabyte PCIe 3 M.2 SSD. It's going to be more than enough speed for something like this. I mean, miles faster than an SD card. Now that all of the internals are assembled, we just need to drop this down inside of the top half of the case. Actually fits in here pretty nicely. It does have that bypass power button on the back. It's a spring-loaded button, so you might have to push it in just a bit to get it down. Got a few screws we need to install. We can put the bottom on the case, and once it's finished, it actually looks really good. Again, one of my favorite things here is the fact that we've got those full-size HDMI ports around back, along with access to all of the USBs, Ethernet, and even the micro SD on the Pi 5. And it's actually a pretty decent looking case. It is minimalistic, nothing fancy here, no RGB. It does have those non-slip feet on the bottom, so it's going to sit right on the desk and not slide around on you. So I've got everything up and running. I've actually installed a few applications, but I did want to kind of walk you through a couple things that I did here just to make this a bit quicker. First thing, a little bit of overclocking on the Pi 5. We've got that cooling system here with the Desk Pi Lite. Going up to that 3 gigahertz on most Raspberry Pis is going to work. And with a lot of these Raspberry Pi 5s, you can also overclock the GPU. Now, the one that I'm on right now does have a little trouble over 850 megahertz on the GPU. This is a kind of a first gen Raspberry Pi 5. But a lot of the newer ones out there really don't have an issue going up to 1 gigahertz. Another thing I wanted to do here was make sure that the NVMe interface was running at PCIe 3.0. This will do 2.0 and 3.0. So in order to do this, we need to modify the config.txt. So we'll go nano boot firmware config.txt right here from terminal. And down at the bottom, we're going to use our keyboard. I'll just show you exactly what I put in here. So for the overclock, I've gone to 3 gigahertz on the CPU. So ARM underscore frequency equals 3000, GPU up to 850. You can experiment with that GPU. Again, this is kind of a first gen Pi 5. And with this one, I do have issues kind of going up to 900 to 1000 megahertz. So I keep it right there at 850. Next thing I did was just enable that Gen 3 interface. So all of this is on screen right now. I mean, you can skip this if you want to, but this is how I've got mine set up. And it does offer me a nice speed boost on the CPU, GPU, and even storage. With this NVMe storage versus an SD card, I mean, it really does wake up the Raspberry Pi. Boots up much quicker. Everything loads a lot faster here. And if we go to Accessories, Raspberry Pi Diagnostics, 
we can see an SD card test. We don't have an SD card. This is gonna just test that storage speed on the NVMe. We'll show the log here. 768,750 kilobytes per second. Target is only 10,000. Random write, 151,000. Target is 500. And our read speed, 207,000. Target for that is only 1,500. So it definitely passed all these tests and it's much faster than any SD card out there on the market. And to just kind of use this as a desktop, I mean, there's a lot of different software that we can install. Personally, I use an application called Pi Apps. This does make it a lot easier to kind of find applications and automatically install them. I'll leave a link to the GitHub in the description. Super easy to install, it's a one-liner. Got all apps, games, and if we just go to games here, you can see we can go with the PSP emulator, Steam Link, Steam, uh, Minecraft, even if you wanna get that modded Minecraft, it's right there. So this is what I like to use, just makes it really easy. Web browsing on the Raspberry Pi 5 has always been really quick. I mean, we've got Wi-Fi 5 here and you can use ethernet if you want to, but with the overclock on the CPU and that NVMe storage, I do notice a nice little speed boost. I mean, everything loads up really quickly. Uh, we'll just go to buy Raspberry Pi. You can see, I mean, it's loaded up instantaneously here. And this is a very image heavy website, as you can see. And if you're interested in picking up any of this stuff, I'll leave links in the description. Let's go ahead and check out some video playback from YouTube. And we'll just get into a 4K demo. Let's find something here. We'll just go with this 4K 60 demo and we're gonna be running this at 1080. So once we get in here, I do wanna go full screen. We're also gonna turn on stats for nerds. And even at 1080 on the Pi 5 with an overclock, we will get some drop frames, but if I didn't have that frame counter on screen, I wouldn't even notice it. It's really smooth when you compare it to the Raspberry Pi 4's 1080p playback performance. So obviously video playback has increased on the Pi 5 from the Pi 4, but we've still got a few drop frames. Again, I really wouldn't notice it if I didn't have that frame counter on. Another thing I like to install is GIMP. So if you want to open source photo editor, something like Photoshop, but totally free, GIMP is definitely where it's at. And we'll just go ahead and bring this up and I'll open up an image that I have here. So again, I mean, if you wanted to do some photo editing, it is totally possible on the Pi 5. So if I just want to, let's say, select by color, just go ahead and grab that. And I can actually fill this in, just something simple, just kind of give us a little design there. And we could definitely go through, fill everything else in here, but just something quick, show you. We'll go ahead and export, and we'll just put it right on the desktop. Now we can close this down. Yeah, you wanna do a little bit of photo editing. Actually works out pretty decently on this, even with several layers, especially if you've got that eight gigs of RAM with your Pi 5. But if the price on the eight is kind of stretching it for you, four gigs can definitely get you by. Next thing I wanna take a look at is emulation. And I'm sure some of you have been eyeballing the RPCS3 application on the desktop. This is the new ARM version from the official developers and I've been having a lot of issues on the Pi 5. This is not something that's gonna run these games at full speed, at least not all of them. And there's really only one that I've been able to get to work so far, that's Rayman Origins. I've tried several, more than this here. I've cleared out, gone back through different games, but most of this stuff does get to the main menu, then the whole system will crash. But I'll show you from here, GPU, Vulkan, and we're sitting at like 640 by 360 with this game. The worst part about this is kind of compiling the shaders before the game starts or the PPU modules. This has already been done. It took about 35 minutes to finish with this game. And let's say on an x86 platform with a decent CPU, it goes way quicker than that.
yeah, it just kind of rebooted everything for me. And after about five different tries, I was able to get back into the game. So you can see, I mean, it's running really slow. I did have to lock this at 30, and I believe this game ran at 60 on the PS3. Once it starts going over that, we do get a lot of crashing going on. But it's been working so far. And there it goes. It crashed again. So yeah, that's exactly what I've been running into here. And I will do a dedicated video on PS3 emulation once a lot of these bugs are ironed out. There are a lot of different emulators that work pretty well here, like PSP using PPSSPP. We'll just get into one of these games. I'll do Sega Revo Rally. We're at 2x resolution, OpenGL backend, and by the way, I'm using an Xbox controller just connected over USB to make it a bit easier. But a lot of the games that I've been testing here with this overclock on the Pi 5 have been running pretty well. Even the God of War series does run at 60, 2x. And this game here, we could probably take it up to 3x, but it still looks pretty good on this 1080p display, just like it is. And the final thing I wanted to show off here was some PC game streaming. This is not cloud gaming. I'm actually just using Steam Link. It is available for the Pi 5, and it works out really well in home. I really haven't tested it away, but usually when I've got this connected, Wi-Fi over on the Pi and whatever PC in the house I'm streaming from, I usually have that connected over Ethernet. And right now I'm just streaming from one of my laptops with an RTX 4060. It'll go right into big picture mode, sort of looks like the Steam Deck here. But we'll get into some gameplay here with Spider-Man Remastered. And on the initial setup with Steam Link itself, it did allow me to go to the Enhanced 1080. So 60, 1080 with a pretty decent bit rate here. Just kind of passing everything up. Looks really good on this display. I mean, running from the Pi in home, we don't have to worry about this thing streaming from the cloud. This is from my own laptop that I have in-house. It does look amazing. And I've actually been able to do up to 120 FPS with this. So 1080, 120 on the Pi 5 using Steam Link works pretty good if you've got a decent router. So with all of the new updates to the Raspberry Pi 5 and all of the awesome accessories they sell, I do think that this could work out for a lot of people out there. If you're not looking for a super powerful system, yeah, the Raspberry Pi 5 could get you by as a desktop PC. And of course, I mean, you could run it without a case like this, but I personally just love everything that's included with this thing. And if you're interested in putting something like this together, I'll leave links for everything we used in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.